What's up guys? I'm going to be starting the assembly guide for the MHP 15 in this video. First, I'm going to go over the parts and the tools that you'll need. Then I will go over the basic shell assembly. And finally, I'm going to end with how to wire it up and how to maintenance it. Here are the parts that you'll need laid out. I'm going to go over them. There is there are two of all the major shell pieces of which there are eight plus the front. There are the two front pieces where the battery goes. There are the two middle pieces, which here's the left one that has a jam door. There's a weird hole in it for some reason. I don't know why. And the flywheel, the middle right, this is where you mount the flywheels. There are the two rear pieces that have a Nerf stock attachment point and you will mount the pusher into. There is the battery cover. There are multiple versions of this and this is not going over the Mac 10 version at all. There is the motor cover that screws onto the flywheel right. There is the jam door itself and the jam door handle which I will go over how to install. There are the two handle pieces. Internally, there is a mag release here and a trigger. It's a 41.5 strife flywheel cage from Open Flywheel Project. That is pretty important. You, I've only used 41.5. The range has been good. I've liked it, so. There is a 90 degree pusher gearbox that has had one side cut off. All of this is available from Out of Darts for a good good prices, affordable, you can get it all in one place, so that's good. You'll need a pair of motors and a pair of flywheels. Ellie. Almost everything here is available from Out of Darts. The things that aren't are the parts that I designed for the MHP. You need, I would recommend, a 21 amp switch rather than a 16 amp. You'll need the pusher gearbox mount, the pinion gear, the pusher arm, and the pusher mounting bracket. And then finally, last critical piece is one inch pipe of some kind. The outer diameter needs to be one inch, and then there is an orange muzzle that will slide onto that. If it's not tight enough, you can always wrap some electrical tape. A couple of optional pieces, and if you don't count the jam doors, optional. There is a folding grip, or conversely, there is a Picatinny rail that can be mounted to the bottom there. As a quick, I, I can't promise these are all of the tools you're going to need, you may need something else. But quickly, you may want to purchase this spring box. It comes with a few small ones that are very useful. There's plenty of useful ones for Nerf in general, but there's these little ones that make a great mag release and trigger spring and then a return spring for the pusher. You will probably want a drill. It's not entirely necessary, I don't think, but it probably is. You'll want a drill with a 332 bit. That is the bit that I use. That's the size for most standard Nerf screws. That's what we're using here. You're gonna need a couple of these kinds of screws for mounting the pusher stuff together. I've actually found that if you have the right spring for the mag release and trigger, you don't actually need screws there, which is nice. You're probably gonna want a couple of long screws to mount the switch in place. Ideally, long screws that are countersunk with the flat head. And then you're gonna want DevCon uh, plastic welder. There we go. This is what we're gonna use along with some screws to put the actual shell pieces together. And that is pretty important because we want this to be as sturdy as possible. If you have a big printer, very big, you can probably print all of these pieces together. I have a link on the Thingiverse page to the files on Dropbox for doing that. I'm going to start with the trigger and handle assembly. You may need to file out this ridge here so that the trigger will travel smoother. There are also a few spots we may need to tweak for perfect fitting. You will probably have to fiddle a little bit to get this to put together. I don't know if this screw is even going to work, but we want a short, fat screw. You could possibly just feed the loop from the spring around this, and that might be the best way. But so we take one of these short, strong springs. This is the trigger. It will activate the switch. So we definitely want a strong spring. Stronger is better in this case because we don't want in any way for the 
switch to get stuck. So you put this spring on here, fit this around here. Spring goes around this post. The same will be true of the mag release, which is this post. They're hard to see here because they're black. Okay, now we're getting to the drill. Geometry made it that I couldn't get a hole to print through the mag release, so we have to drill one. I did have a divot there to guide the drill. We're gonna want one of these washery guys. I screw that in. I don't know if you guys know this, but doing mod work on camera is actually really hard. Check that out. It works. This is always a pain in the butt, which is actually why the handle should be glued together in a separate group. Uh, kind of like the Apollo. These are just the standard screw size. There's the bigger ones that come with older end strike things like the long shot, long strike, etc. And we aren't using those. Over tighten the screws, we'll strip out the screw posts and then you have to use a bigger screw or a different thread at least. You'll probably want some shorter ones for this spot here. And that's the trigger, the trigger assembly. Oh, there it goes. Um, you may find you will have to modify the, the mag release. We take a lighter, heat this up a little bit and we gently bend this just a little bit more. The mag release needs to come out into the mag well itself so that when your your mag is in, it actually forces it out of the way and then it is forced into the magazine. Uh, we will have to take this apart again for the wiring. So there we go. That's how this works. The mag will not stop. If you have an older version of some of these files, they do not have a mag stopper, but the newer ones do so that when you shove the mag in, it can't go up higher then all the way in. This is the handle, it's all put together. One final note on the handle is uh, for comfort is file away this rounded edge and then here a little bit. Next we'll go over the pusher. You need to drill a hole in the back here. You may need to file down this, this, and these spots to make sure there is no friction. We want this to like as you can see, it will more or less fall with no, with just gravity. That's what we want. We want as little friction here as possible. We need to find a screw for the back of this. You screw this into the back. If you decide to use that elastic thing that goes over the motor, say in the stock gearbox motor, you'll have to file out that whole area. Pinion gear just goes on there. I mean, and there it is. So what we will do here, the pusher will go into here. So once it's there, take your drill. Drill, be careful to drill through only one section of the shell. It happened. Newer versions have two screw holes here so that it will be held in place. You probably don't even need to glue it at that point. The gearbox mount just slides into that slot there. The pusher goes like that. One last thing, this is important. You will probably want to add some foam, some craft foam, glue it to the bottom half of the gearbox here like this so that it is just held in as tight and secure as possible. On the rear here, you'll probably want to apply some foam around to get the best fit on the stock. Too long here. We want to make sure the screw doesn't go past the bottom of the pusher. To put the pusher in place, you Put it in like this and then flip it down and now it will not come out without being pushed on the other side of the shell when it's all assembled there is also a piece here that holds the pusher down we may need to file that down a little bit if you find that you're getting a lot of friction or something and then we get another one of these hat guys I don't know, to just make sure that that pusher spring doesn't come off and there we go this will not go anywhere the foam isn't going to interact with the pusher box. This is the whole pusher assembly. Gluing and screwing these parts together, as you can see, they interlock. There are pieces that hang over. One other note, to fit the handle in properly, you will need to file down this spot here. Um, there are also screw holes for the handle too. We pour out some DevCon. Do you like my lid holder? Put some here. There's no helping it. I gotta get my fingers gross here. It's really important that we, at this point, are very careful that the rails are all lined up very straight. We can actually set this down 
on a table or a flat surface. The inside, both halves meet up and they are perfectly all symmetric and flat. We glued the middle right and the back right together on the on the left side though where the uh, where the jam door goes. We don't actually want to glue these together and the reason is that when it's all put together it's much easier to maintenance the pusher by just taking off the rear back piece. Oh god fuck. <laughs> it would have been perfectly reasonable to start with the gluing now that I'm thinking about it so I, you know, depending on what I edit out, there's a ton of DevCon here. Probably too much. Because that just happened. Okay. Now we, for the handle, we are gonna lather it up. So, and we are just gonna really get that in there good. Maybe this one. Can yeah, this one seems good. Can my hands pass up? Can my hands? Go over, review. Last video is useless. These four are glued together. There will be screws. There's one here for the handle. There are three for these middle pieces. And then the left handle piece is free floating. That just, it screws in and then it's clamped inside. On this side, we have these two are glued. And then this one will also just slide in and screw in and it's also free floating and holds into the handle through this screw port here. Next up, I think we'll do the jam door. You need to make sure there is uh, very little friction here. That may require some sanding. I sanded and filed down the top and bottom of my door itself. That slides in. There are guide pieces all over the place here. If you want to do a return spring, you just find one that's about the same length here and then uh, go from there. It needs to be another one of those washer looking things. You'll need a screw so that you can attach the handle to the to the door itself. Screws in so the jam door just attaches there and it will slide closed. The uh, handle goes on the outside here and may just twist on but you may need to you know go a little more in depth than that too it goes like that um there's no locking mechanism for the jam door should have been uh it's about finding the right spring and i didn't have one so i used this spring had to cook in a little drill over here you may need to drill out these holes again a little bit for the jam door which only holds at the top the battery slides into here I think that covers the whole build for the physical construction of it. The installation of the folding grip, if you choose to do that, is you screw the two halves together over the other ones and you just drill a couple of holes through the provided holes. The way that I decided the position for this was just uh, I pushed it so that the grip folded was flush. After that, I did a little, I just held the lighter against here and here, and I just squished it in until it was flush, folded. The motor cover installation is as simple as you slide this here, make sure it, it locks in place. It should, should fit pretty solid. So it actually seats in pretty flush there. Then you'll just dr drill those two holes, screw it in. The barrel is just, you just cut it down to length once the internals are in to mention is the bottom here on the pusher arm itself should be rounded out. The gearbox actually applies downward pressure to it that ends up making it potentially jam if that's not rounded. The circuit, so the switch goes like this, the little clicky button is pointing down and all this does is actuates the switch like that. I am toying with future updates of putting a smaller switch here and having it hit both, but uh, I haven't really decided to. I kind of, I it's grown on me. The act of braking has grown on me because when you shoot it, it just shoots. There's no extra noise. There's no extra rev or anything. It just goes. There is one position where it has, hi Ellie, it has one loss of performance, which is if the pusher is in this position, like slightly forward and it's pushed a dart towards the flywheels, but not in them yet. When you rev it up, it'll pop that one down. It'll just pop out. 
On the normally closed, we go to the battery, the XT60 connector, and then the black also goes through the front motor position and then to the pusher. The red, this is a little more complicated, actually it's not really complicated at all. It goes from common to the flywheels to the pusher and then normally open goes to the battery and that's it. That is how simple the circuit is. It is a little more complicated than a strife because we have to and it's not a two switch setup like a rapid strike or three switch even. You know. Oh, the positive on the pusher I found is almost always pointing down. Uh, do the test with some alkaline batteries when you make your circuit and you know check that the pusher spins clockwise because if it doesn't then it's gonna jam and it won't work. And if it's going full speed with an XT60, like a, a LiPo, it'll probably strip that gearbox if it jams like that. Oh, and lubricate the shit out of it too. Okay, so the NO goes like this, the COM goes like this, and the negatives go to here. And uh, you could take it, the negative can be all connected, but that's not very clean. Sorry guys. So other than, you know, the occasional, you know, problem you might have with, say, you know, something getting caught, you can sand these down, lubricate that. If your pusher needs replaced, or you need to check it for a jam or something, you know, if you leave the back off, to remove the pusher, you push it up and over, and then that can be replaced. I'll go over my other gearbox because it's a little simpler. So the gearbox, if you need to replace the gearbox itself, or the the most likely failure I've found is that this will get stripped, this little whatever gear this is that goes on the motor. This is easy to get off. All you do is take a ideally something flat, like a flat blade screwdriver and you just wedge it off and then the motor just sticks back in here and you'll hear it click oh there it goes it clicks and then it's in all the way uh, if you're using like a neo rhino maybe even a rhino or a fang or whatever uh, it's hard to because of the the magnets and, and all that is harder to sort of manually rotate the pusher gear the pinion gear, where on the stock motor for this, which gives a lower rate of fire, it's really easy. I don't know if I'd recommend a standard push flywheel motor in your circuit for your pusher, unless you want a really high rate of fire and you're not so concerned about velocity. It would be great for HVZ because, you know, velocity is less of a concern, assuming HVZ events will get the well, start allowing half darts in low power systems. I really hope they do. It's stupid not to. Half darts are in no way inherently more dangerous. They just have better ballistics and you tend to see them in high power systems because they really take advantage of high power. But they work in flywheels and I'm hoping that, you know, something like the MHP and maybe the, the Katana adapters by Open Flywheel Project and stuff will start pushing us towards allowing half darts, which are superior in terms of ballistics to full length darts in flywheels. The performance loss has been so minimal for a substantial increase, really, on the, on the, the accuracy that, so hopefully we start seeing some change there because they're better, but they don't hurt more. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, let me know if there's anything that I wasn't clear on and I will address it as I can.